Hi everyone, I'm Chef Susie with Escafé Online. And tonight I'm going to be making the roulade. I have all of my ingredients out on the table, all of my mise en place, everything that I need ready to go. And I also have my sanitizing solution. I have my solution in a container with the rag, which is fine, or in a spray bottle too. So make sure that you have this when you're doing your assessment and be sure that you capture it somewhere in the photo Maybe put it behind your ingredients or off to the side, but make sure it's there and make sure that we can see it too. So we know that you're practicing good sanitation because safety is always first. I cleaned my table before I began and I'm going to be cleaning it when I'm finished. So knowing that, let's tuck this away and we'll get started on our fun recipe. We're going to be making our cake batter which is going to be our egg yolks and our granulated sugar and our oil whip together, fold in the cake flour, and then we're gonna whip the egg whites separate and fold them both together, spread them out thin, and bake them. So let's get going. I'm gonna be sifting my cake flour. This is one of these things that can be pretty lumpy, as you can see, when you pull it out of your box. So make sure that you're sifting it, you're aerating it, and you're getting all those lumps out. Otherwise, you're gonna have these lumps in your batter. They're not gonna go away on their own. You have to help them out. So be mindful of that. So let's get our egg yolk started. We're just gonna whisk these on the machine until they turn lighter in color. I'm going to put this on about a medium speed and then I'm going to be adding just a wee little bit of salad oil. So they're going to work on their own for a little bit and then we're going to be folding in our cake flour. We're going to do this by hand. These rolls are really delicate so they don't break too much when you roll them. So you want them to be pretty fragile and so they bend and they don't crack. You're going to get a little cracking sometimes, but don't worry about that. That's just part of the cake roll. But while our egg yolks are mixing, I want to take this opportunity to mention our trip to France again. It's coming up soon next month, the month of October. We're going to be leaving on the 19th and it's not too late to join in on the fun. It's going to be a fabulous trip. We're going to be visiting the town of Nice, which is right on the Mediterranean, and we're going to be seeing Escoffier's home, which is now a museum with very elaborate sugar and chocolate sculptures, and just history it just makes the hair on your arms stand up thinking about it. And then we'll be visiting the City of Lights, Paris, ooh la la, what a beautiful place for shopping and eating, and this is all a guided wine and food tour so there's going to be just some wonderful food and some great french wines we're going to be visiting so many places we're going to visit a perfume factory and we're also going to be taking a pastry class right in the heart of paris so keep it in mind it's not too late to sign up you still have time so think about it if you're thinking about going i highly recommend it it's kind of a trip of a lifetime and we'll be going with some fellow students too, so it's going to be a great time. So try to join in if you can. And our egg yolks are getting a little lighter in color. I'm going to go ahead and turn the speed up just a little bit. So we want them to get some air into them. This is only going to make our batter lighter. And does anyone have any questions? I'm gonna go ahead and add the oil and then we're gonna continue mixing. I'm gonna turn the mixer off. This is just a little salad oil. It's just gonna add a little bit of moisture to the mix. And with these roulades, if you're filling them with buttercream or ganache, you can even fill them with a nice fudge icing. They store so easily. You can freeze them, you can store them in the refrigerator, so keep all of that in mind. Now that our egg yolks are getting a little bit lighter, 
we're going to be adding our flour soon. So I made a cake roll earlier and I popped it in the freezer and we're going to be pulling it out so we can um, let it soften a little bit before we cut it. Okay, the egg yolks are just about ready to go. And keep in mind that you're using cake flour in this assignment. It's um, lighter, it has less gluten, and it's going to give that lightness and pliability to the cake roll. Okay, now that our egg yolks are nice and light in color, we're just going to gently fold this cake flour in. This is a really easy mix to make. It's nothing that you really haven't done before. I'm just scraping down the bottom as I kind of go along. And this is definitely something that you want to do by hand. And then we're going to set this aside. We're going to whip our egg whites. Okay. Now we have our egg whites with our sugar, and we're going to mix that on medium high speed. We're going to put half of our sugar in in the beginning, then we're going to whisk these, and then we're going to add the rest of the sugar. And we want these egg whites to be a soft peak, not dry, because when they're dry, they deflate and you get those little white pieces, and they're just very hard to mix in. You want a nice soft peak so it remains, it's, so it keeps its shape and remains all, all the airiness remains in it when you're folding it into your batter. So, so we're gonna let these mix. We're gonna let these mix for a little bit. And then we're gonna talk about the roulade a little bit. A lot of times in baking, you're gonna come across these French terms like the roulade that mean a shape. And another one, a very popular one is the financier. And that's in the shape of a gold bar and it means finance in French. So keep in mind that some of these names, they're just describing the shape of the dessert and you can make it whatever flavor that you like. So you can have a lot of fun with it. So let me know how you do on your cake rolls and even your canotier. So I'm wondering while our egg whites are mixing, if anyone has any comments or any ideas on some flavors for their cake rolls. Our egg whites are starting to get fluffy. And when we're finished combining these batters, we're just going to spread this out thinly on the back of a half sheet pan. Bake it at 350 for about eight to 10 minutes. These don't bake long at all. You're gonna to wanna to keep a real close eye on them. You're just going to get a little brown. And you don't want to overbake these because they're going to become difficult to roll and they can even get crunchy. So keep a close eye on them. Look for a slight brownness. Feel them to make sure that they, they're set and then go ahead and pull them out. And our egg whites are starting to get a little thicker. So I'm just going to add the rest of the sugar. And then we're going to let these get a nice soft they're just about ready to go. And be mindful you don't want these to go too long. Just keep a close eye on them so they fold together nicely. In the cake rolls, the sheets, you're going to want
want to put a little powdered sugar on them and then you can store them wrapped so easily. The powdered sugar is so they don't stick to your plastic and they won't stick when you're rolling either. So our egg whites are just about ready to go and then we'll be incorporating our mix. Okay, now that they've reached a nice soft peak, we're going to be folding them into our batter. This is really easy. You've done this before with your Genoa sponge. Very similar. And then we're just going to carefully fold these together and we have a question. Medium high speed on this mixer, number 10 is the highest, so medium high would be like eight or nine. Very rarely use number 10 because it just seems like you're beating out any air that you're putting in. But you don't want it to go too slow, otherwise something like this is never gonna whip up for you. So I'm just gently folding these together. Then I'm going to the bottom and then bringing this up and some of my streaks are almost gone. I just have a little bit. Once those streaks are gone, then you know that you're pretty much ready to go. We don't have any lumps because the whites were mixed to a nice soft peak. So we're gonna go ahead and spread this on our pan. And we have another question. The question is, what type of oil did I use? I just used a regular salad oil, works just fine for this. So we're gonna spread this on some parchment. And I've got a pan here. And I'm just gonna put a little dab of batter in my corners, because I like to secure my paper before I start piping and spreading things on it. I always do this with my pad issue. Just seems to work out nicely. So we're going to go ahead and put the batter on the pan. And then we're just going to spread this almost to the edges. This is what the offset spatula is so good for, things like this that you're spreading thinly that you want to have some control over. And we have another question. The question is, why can't you use melted butter? You sure can if you like, if you'd like to use the butter. For this recipe, I always use oil, but butter will work just fine too. So what I'm doing is I'm just carefully spreading this almost to the edges. Sometimes it'll go over a little bit, but that's fine. You can just trim it off. And we have another question. The question is, why did I mix the flour by hand? Because it's a really delicate cake, and I didn't want to overwork the flour. I just wanted to keep it nice and, um, I wanted to keep it nice and, um, so it's nice and delicate. Sorry, that's the word I was looking for. So things that you're trying to keep delicate, you're going to want to fold those by hand. So now that this is all spread out evenly, I'm not too close to the edges. If you feel like you are, you can just kind of scrape it off and bring it back. It's going to go in the oven at 350 for about 8 to 10 minutes until it gets just a little golden brown. So let's go ahead and put this in the oven. And I have a roll that I made earlier, one of the cakes. So this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. So remember I mentioned that I put the powdered sugar on here so it wouldn't stick to the plastic. So I'm going to go ahead and just carefully brush that off. 
so I don't have too much. This is a great way to store these, just putting some plastic on. I tucked it underneath a little bit. And since these cakes are thinner, you're definitely going to want to cover them well if you're storing them. So we're going to brush off some of this powdered sugar that I have on here. And like I said, this is going to be helpful when you're rolling this too, so it doesn't stick to your paper. And we have another question. The recipe, um, the question is, is can you make this recipe with gluten-free flour? It might require a completely different recipe because this needs to be pliable and sometimes you lose that with the gluten-free flour. So I suggest doing a little research and finding a recipe that is for a gluten-free cake roll. That would probably be the best way to go. The question is, can you freeze the dough? Absolutely, these freeze really nice. You can either freeze them before they're filled or after they're filled too. So we're just going to invert this roll and peel the paper off the back. It's going to be nice and soft and just kind of take your time. Sometimes it gets a little stuck. And I've inverted this onto another parchment. You can even invert this onto a towel if you like to, but I like to use parchment because then I roll it up in the parchment and I can label the parchment too. So this is really easy to make. You're going to love it and you'll be sure to dazzle your friends and family. So I have some buttercream that I made earlier. This is the same recipe from our very first assessment just a plain vanilla buttercream that I'm going to be spreading on the roll. And this works wonderfully with different flavors. You can even add nuts or dried fruits or even some mini chocolate chips would be nice too. You can just have so much fun. Remember the roulade is just the shape. We have another question. How long ahead can you make the cake? The question is, how long ahead can you make the cake? Well, since it's a little bit thinner, it's going to dry out a little bit. I suggest only refrigerating something like this for a few days. But you could actually make it a few weeks ahead if you freeze it. So you'll have a lot of fun with these roulades. Just go ahead and make them. Like I said, it's nothing that you haven't done before in the course. It's really just a different shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off the ends. And this way we're going to get a, a nice clean edge for the middle of the roll. And I also like to trim off the outer edge too. And we have another question. What about bacon? Though? What about bacon? I think the question is, what about bacon? I think that that would be really cool. There's a bacon trend right now, and you're seeing it a lot in desserts. And something like this would be really neat. Let's say you took a vanilla cake or a yellow cake like this and you made a maple flavored buttercream and you took some bacon and made it nice and crispy and sprinkled it all over the top here and then rolled it up. I think that would be really neat. Really nice contrast, the salty and the sweet and the bacon's gonna give it a cool smoke flavor. So definitely try it. Make some things with bacon. They're super fun. Bacon also goes really good with chocolate. So keep that in mind if you like bacon if your friends and family eat bacon, try it. They'll be really impressed. They might think it's really cool. So we're going to go ahead and roll up this roll. This is going to be the middle of the roll. So I'm just starting it out a little bit. And then we're just going to be rolling it with the parchment or by hand. 
So you can lift up your parchment or your towel and you can kind of help it along. Squeeze it a little bit and you can roll it completely by just pulling that parchment up. Or I actually like to roll mine by hand. I just like to get my hands in things. I like to touch my food. And this is our roll. And you can so easily just go back and wrap the parchment around this. And you can store it just like this. You can wrap it in plastic. You can write on here with a Sharpie and label it. Make sure that you're putting the seam down. You can store it in the refrigerator or in the freezer. And like I said, they freeze really well. And we have another question. The question is, can you flavor the batter, such as with pumpkin or maybe even bananas? You can. There's also a lot of pumpkin or banana recipes out there. When you get to course three, you're going to learn how to develop some of your own recipes, so that would be something good to work on. But you can start by putting a few tablespoons of pumpkin in and maybe eliminate a little bit of the liquid, like the oil. So you can work on developing your own recipe, or there's so many pumpkin cake roll recipes out there, you can find one and have a lot of fun with that too. So I've got a cake roll that I made earlier. We had it setting up in the freezer. I have it in the parchment. I'm just going to be unrolling it. And these are just, they're so much fun and they're so easy. And once you cut into these and you serve them, people are just really going to be saying, wow, that's really cool you made that. So have some fun with these, like I said. We have another question. Can you ganache the roll? The question is, can you ganache the roll? Absolutely. They look wonderful ganache. Super cool thing to do. You can put it on a pouring rack, take a light ganache, and pour it right over. Really wonderful look. Then you can cut it, put a little buttercream on top. Very nice. So these are so easy to cut. I've just got my knife in warm water, and I'm cutting off the end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put them on our plate. And you can either cut these a little bit thicker and stand them up, or just a little bit thinner and lay them down. We have another question. What is the difference between this and a Swiss roll? The question is, what's the difference between this and a Swiss roll? It's pretty much the same. Anytime that you hear roll in a recipe, that means it's a cake roll like this. Because the roulade is a term for roll in French. So I'm just dipping my knife in water, and I'm just cutting my roll, cutting it in about half-inch pieces. And then we're just going to be fanning this around the plate. It's an easy thing to do. And you can also make this for the Yule Log and decorate it really cool for Christmas time with some maraschino cherries. You can cut some of those um, mint leaf candies or put fresh mint leaves on it. Chocolate buttercream, make it look like a little bark. It'll be a lot of fun for the holiday season. So now that I have this all sliced up, we're just going to go ahead and fan it around our plate. And it's just so easy to do. And we have our nice swirl of white buttercream. And like I said, these look really beautiful with jams, your ganache. Great idea, ganaching the outside too. Really lots of fun. It's a fun dessert, and your family and friends are going to love it. And if you've done the Genoa assessment, you're pretty much doing the same thing. So try it, you'll love it. 
and let me know how you like it. And you can decorate this, dress it up with some fruits, some berries, some cream, whatever you like. And these are really easy to handle because it's just a little bit of sponge cake. We're going to be putting some fruit on here. I've got some peaches that I cut earlier. It's a nice time of year for peaches. And we have another question. The question is, how would you ganache the outside? Make your roll, and you can either chill it or you can ganache it right after you make it. I would recommend chilling it so the filling has a chance to set up, and then you won't be damaging it as you move it around. And what you can do is just put the whole thing right on a pouring rack, or a, um, a cooling rack will work just fine too and just go ahead and carefully pour your ganache over it. You can put your ganache in a little pitcher, or you can use a ladle, or you can carefully pour it over using just your bowl. So we're just going to decorate our roulade plate with some fruits. I've got some berries here that I picked up earlier today. And we're just adding a little bit of color. Just fanning some of my strawberries. I have a nice green plate, so I'm leaving the tops on my strawberries for a little contrast with my green plate. And then I have a little bit of buttercream in my bag, too. And we'll be putting some blueberries on here as well. And we're going to be wrapping up in a little bit, so if you have any questions today, make sure that you get them in. Nice fruit and berries, whatever you like, whatever flavor you're making, I'm sure they'll be great. We're going to go ahead and sprinkle a few blueberries on here as well. And this is our roulade for today. And thank you for joining me. And we'll see you next week.